Good morning and welcome to the second day of the Werryman's Way. As you can see behind me here, just through the trees, is the River Yare, and I've just passed Rockland Broad and Short Dyke. Now Rockland Broad is a beautiful, beautiful open piece of water. Um, it's the location where they actually sunk some wherries, um, and it is a National Nature Reserve. It's owned by the RSPB, and there is a hide that overlooks the Broad, so it's a lovely place to sit down and just enjoy, enjoy the view. Just round the corner though, I'd never been there before, was a lovely bench just overlooking the broad as well. So there's a couple of spots to enjoy the area. So I'm on about 11 miles today, following the River Yare most of the way, a little short inland section um, near Langley. And then I'm gonna be going past Hardley Flood and into Loddon for an overnight stay there. Now I think there might be a diversion uh, in place around Hardley Flood because of um, footpath closures um, some bridges have collapsed I think and the uh, riverbank's been eroded too much and they're still doing repair work so it might not be an official part of the route there but it is the official diversion so it's gonna be a really nice day 20 degrees lovely sunshine and we've already seen so much wildlife I can see two deer just over here in the field some swans down there we've seen some shell duck grebes and the first bird we saw was a marsh harrier that flew over right in the centre of Rockland. So just on the other side of the river, you might be able to make out a chimney and that is inside Strumpshaw Fair Nature Reserve, which is owned and managed by the RSPB. And that forms part of a massive network of nature reserves, which is called the um, Mid-Year National Nature Reserve. Now I'm following the Riviera at the moment and it just takes me round to the Beauchamp Arms which is also um, the staves at Claxton. So I've just left the Beauchamp Arms behind me and I've just joined this little tiny country lane which leads me into the village of Langley and this is the most considerable part of road walking on the entire day. Now behind me over here I'm getting some views over to Old Buckenham Ferry Drainage Mill which was the location of a ferry linked across to Buckenham on the other side and that was closed well over a hundred years ago. I can't find any history on the mill itself but it's probably dated to around the 19th century and it doesn't appear to be listed. Langley really is a tiny little village and it doesn't have a pub or a shop or anything. What it does have is Langley Abbey Estate, which you can see just through the bush here. There's a lovely cafe set within the ruins of the 12th century abbey. Now it was dated to 1195, that's when it was founded, and all the upstanding remains are grade one listed with the whole area being a scheduled ancient monument. 
it's an absolutely beautiful place to visit and if you're in the southern broads you must stop there sadly for me it's closed today but do allow some time just to have a venture in if it is open So after following the road for about a mile or so and passing through Langley, I finally rejoined the riverbank and I've got a lovely view of a marsh harrier just gliding over the marshes. Sadly, it's backed by the eyesore that is County Sugar Factory. But look at that, as a male marsh harrier and then a great crested grebe in the water as well. So it's absolutely gorgeous. So we've just arrived on the opposite bank to Cantley and you can see the Reed Cutter Arms just there which is a lovely waterside pub, really popular with boaters during the summer months. But the peace and the quiet really is broken by this great monstrosity, Cantley Sugar Factory. It's just a gentle, well, loud rumble really in the background. You can't really hear any birds singing or anything like that. Probably the worst section of the entire walk this quarter of a mile past the factory. So I've come about a mile along the riverbank since the sugar factory and I've arrived at Hardley Mill with its small visitor centre which is open during high season. But the mill itself is Grade 2 listed, it dates to 1874 and stands four storeys high. And what's special about this one is that it's been so fantastically restored. There are very few mills in Norfolk that look like this. Most of them stand as just derelict ruins. As you're walking along this riverbank footpath, always have a look inland and away from the river. So there's a pool just over here. There's two shell duck, there's some black-headed gulls, but just at the back, there's actually a green shank. Now green shanks are, are wading birds and most of the time there's only around 500, maybe 800 in the country at any one time. And most commonly seen during migratory periods. So right now in spring and also in the autumn.
So I'm just following the edge of Hardley State here at the moment. This is the access dike to it. And what's unusual is the fact that there is no public mooring whatsoever. Every single berth is private. Now it's known that this dike here was cut between 1810 and 1840, but it replaced an older one. So if I just show you this side, apparently an older, more winding, sort of meandering cut existed just along here up to the river Yet, yeah, and that was potentially dug in Saxon times. It provided access from the river Yeah up to the village, and you can see the church just on the skyline up there. Now, it's known that the, uh, the village did have a pub at one point, numerous cottages and warehouses, but now it's pretty much empty. There is a church, there's a few houses and a, a farm. But if you do want to explore this area and you're coming by boat, you're going to have to moor at either Loddon over that way or Langley over there and then walk down. Just behind me over there you can see Limpen Ho Drainage Mill. Now this one is Grade 2 listed and dates to the mid 19th century, so a very similar age to uh, Hardley Mill. Now this one's in a much more sorry state, but as you can see they are doing some restoration works to it, so in the coming years it will look far better. <laughs> So I'm just approaching Hardley Cross. Now this is a scheduled ancient monument and grade two listed building that dates to the 16th century and sits right alongside the River Yare. Now it actually marks the uh, boundary between the Corporation of Norwich, which is on my side at the moment, and then the borough of Great Yarmouth, just on the other side. So I've had to leave the river shed behind me. It's just down by those vans over there. So there is a footpath closure in place. So I've had to take this detour off as diversion. And looking at the signposts, this has been an official diversion for some time, but they are doing some work over there. So fingers crossed, the original route will be open at some point. Now, the good thing about taking this little diversion is you get a fantastic view of Hardley Hall. Now this is a grade two star listed hall that dates to the mid or late 16th century. And the unusual thing is it's built from stone. And most houses around here are either built from brick or wood. So 
So I've just left Hardley Hall behind me over there and I've gained a little bit of height so I can actually see down onto Hardley Flood just over here. Now it's a nature reserve and a site of special scientific interest covering an area of just over 120 acres. Now the original route actually snakes its way along the edge of the nature reserve but this temporary diversion still gives you quite a nice view. So I've just left this lovely area of woodland behind me and I'm about to join the road which then descends down into Chedgrave. Now there is a pub and numerous shops there but it is also only a quarter of a mile to Loddon which is my final destination for today. Now, I wasn't aware of this, but the uh, Werrymans Way actually has come off the road that goes down into Chedgrave, which I thought it followed all the way into the village, and has joined this trackway here, which heads along and actually rejoins the original Werrymans Way, just this side of, well, that's Loddon side of um, Hardley Flood. There I'll rejoin the River Chet, and then I'll turn right and follow that into Chedgrave, and then down into my final destination of Loddon. taken one tiny little detour off the route and that is to check out All Saints Church here in Chedgrave. Now it's believed that this church dates to the 12th century but there is potential that the tower itself could date to even earlier perhaps the late 11th century. 